And we are live. Derek, welcome to the CMA. Welcome to all the listeners. Today we have a very, very exciting guest. So we're going to have here Derek, one of the co-founders of Legends of Elysium, which is going to have their TGE in just a few days from now. On the 29th, they're going to have their listing. So this AMA is going to be dedicated towards like really to get to learn Derek as a person and why he started this project and why it is so exciting. So if uh, you're the first time you're hearing about this, there's going to be a lot of information here. And hopefully we can also fish some information that nobody knows about. Uh, let's see how it goes. Derek, please introduce yourself. Welcome. Yeah, Elliot, thanks for the intro. Hi, Elliot. Hi, everyone. So great to be here. Thanks for the invitation. And yeah, I'm looking forward just to tell you more um, about the project, about myself, about our, uh, you know, plans for future. So yeah, let's go. All right, fantastic. So Derek, can you give us a little bit of a background story? Like, um, how did you end up co-founding a cryptocurrency GameFi project? Yeah, absolutely. So let's start from the beginning, let's say. So I'm in crypto space since 2019. So it's like five years now. Some people are much longer than me. I know that. But I think it's enough just to make something spectacular. So when I started in crypto space, that was, of course, like basics, let's say learning crypto, because crypto is like a very um, complex environment to work within. And uh, thanks to that, I learned how to um, actually invest, how to um, become investor within crypto space. Thanks to that, as a next step, myself and a few other partners, we started investing as a group, but unofficially. Later on, when the market was pretty hot, many projects actually requested just to collaborate with the projects who are registered. So we become actually offic officially registered VC. It wasn't a big VC. It, it's a um, small VC, but because of that, we knew how to act within the space. We knew, we spoken to the project, we talked to them on a daily basis, we tried to help them on a daily basis in terms of, let's say, community growth as well at the beginning, any kind of marketing they needed to have, um, representing them as well for non-English speaking users or projects as well. So that was very challenging. And at the same time, we spoke into the infrastructure project and gaming project as well. So 2020, 2021 was a very uh, hot season for talking to projects. And we knew actually what are the needs of the projects. Thanks to that, we knew what's the niche on the market especially gaming and because we've got some experience uh, from our network from in our background in gaming we knew what's the niche and we evolved and created the game called legends of elysium so it's a fusion of a card game and board game so when you look at the game it's actually something unique so we need we, we knew what's the niche and since then since 2021 we've been building the project uh, just yesterday we uh, open the closed, let's say open, we enabled the closed beta version of the game. So for two and a half years, we got to the alpha stage. Now we've got closed beta and within a week, just over a week, we will be opening our uh, beta to, to the public. So it's very exciting for us. Fantastic. Sounds like um, a lot of traction has brought you here today. Very exciting time after you know surviving the bear market and building this game, coming to a point where you're finally going to the market. So congratulations for that. That cannot be said about any project out there, right? Um, yeah. You get molded uh, in, in in difficult times. Let's say it that way. That's true. Um, mate. So for those who are listening, can you explain us a little bit more about? Well, give us kind of the high view. What is Legends of Elysium like? Um, what do they need to know in order to become more familiar with it? Maybe you can give us also some examples for them to understand what this game is all about. Yeah, absolutely. So I just touched base the, the whole idea. So just start in a nutshell, let's say. Legends of Elysium is a fusion. So it's like a combination of a card game and a board game. Normally, when you look at the market, it's not only about web free, even traditional market. You can see either card games, or board games. 
So that's the like most of them. Actually, they are either of them. So what we've done, we just compiled a game, let's say like Heart Hearthstone, probably the most uh, popular game, the most famous game, in ten, like card game, TCG game, and board game, let's say like Catan. There is a very popular game uh, amongst um, board game players. So the main difference with our game is instead of, let's say, deploying the cards on the table and playing card against the card, we introduced the hexes and the mm, board game model where people actually converting those characters from the cards into the mm, characters which will be deployed on the battlefield. So you're using that character just to move uh, in, within the hexes, changing the positions, fight within other characters, and building lands at the same time just to create a path of the battlefield. So from our point of view, that's something really unique. Yeah, so for those who are listening, you can actually go right now to Legend of Elysium and then already try it out. Like you can play already the game. Um, for me, it's a, it's a very much of a combination and I don't want to say this in a, in a negative way. I mean it in all the positivity in it. Like for me, it got me kind of a vibe of a combination of a player card game like uh, Hearthstone, but also in a sense, a little bit like The Witcher. You have kind of created your own universe. Um, but kind of also like, uh, I don't know, in, in other combinations of Lord of the Rings, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So first of all, like well done also on the visuals of all the characters and all these things uh, and also the lore um, and everything that is around it, right? Like, uh, seems like you guys have put a lot of effort into this one. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. And you are right. It's like a, when you're talking about Witcher or uh, Lord of the Rings, it's kind of the that's some vibe you've got because our game is like set in the fantasy world when you've got like uh, three races at this moment, right? You've got the uh, dark elves, you've got orcs, you've got human. They fight uh, within, like, against each other. They've got different kind of characters in the background for their races. So yeah, absolutely right. And thanks for that. What you're saying? Yeah, and like I was listening the other day to another YouTuber that was talking about like, okay, mass adoption for game fire, right? And um, most of the times, so for me at least, like sometimes I play, let's say, the PlayStation, and then when you're talking about like these major AAA like games, well, his argument is something that I've not thought about too much. Like mass adoption does not necessarily need to be with like triple high tier like AAA games that are really hard to play with most machines. Like it's more likely that to actually happen through games that are making it very easy for new gamers to basically start playing, right? So. Kind of like Legends of Elysium, you cannot, you don't need to download anything, right? You can just go to the to the web page and you can basically play it on web, right? And it works very very smooth to it to to be honest, right? Like obviously it's a great starting point, and then from there to go to other platforms. Um, mm -hmm. I guess uh, my my question would be then, what kind of problem are you currently trying to solve uh, by bringing this game this way? Uh, and is this also the reason why you chose to bring it this way out? Yeah, so thanks for the question, Elliot. So when you talk about, let's say, mass adoption, this is the, the main thing. So um, when we talk about gaming within traditional gaming, let's say Web2, we call it, uh, you've got so many gamers, you've got so many users. When you go to Gamescom, let's say the big gaming events, people actually buzzing there. You've got so many, you've got some stands of EA games, blizzards, and people are crazy just to stand like two hours just to test one game. So that's the proper adoption within like traditional gaming. But for web free gaming, we're still awaiting for that special wave just to have people not only related to crypto, to blockchain world, but we would like to, and we are actually doing that, inviting users from traditional gaming and directing them towards the projects like ours to test something different. So let's say what we are actually solving. So the, the main thing is that we doing like a frictionless onboarding of traditional um, of Web2 users into Web3. 
because when we talk about all the features we've got available, everything is default. As you said, we've got the web version. You don't need to download anything. Even you don't need to pay for anything like you've got it, let's say, on Steam or Play Store where you, you need to um, pay to test. At this point, you guys, you just log in to web, testing the game. You've got default decks. And the game looks like normal, traditional web to game. Of course, great quality graphics, you know, like that's what we want to keep, the same, keeping the same level of quality. So when people actually got onboarded and trying to test the game, we cannot actually um, give them any barriers because once they uh, stuck at one place, they will lose interest. So we don't want to bomb, bomb them with, um, additional blockchain features, uh, marketplaces, or MetaMask wallets. They testing the game even using like social logins. So they can um, use Google account, Facebook account, just to log into the game, just play. And at the same time, they develop their skills. They experience new features. So let's say, oh, there is a marketplace. What's that for? Oh, I can mint the card. So it means that I can burn it. Oh, but what does it mean burn? OK, it means that. Uh, I can actually, the card can disappear, but what is minting? Minting, oh, it means that I can have uh, something on blockchain. So it means that I can actually own this NFT for myself and I can sell it later on on this marketplace. So there is a, like a baby step-by-step -step procedure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, thank you, Derek. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the moment that you really decided that you want to go full into crypto so before the communities before the game what was for you like how did you actually find out about this market and how what was the moment for you that you thought aha i really want to do this full time and leave whatever it was that i did before uh, the thing is that i when i started i never thought that i will get to the place where i'm at this moment I thought that i will be doing what i've been doing in the past and then at the same time i will be doing that as an additional, let's say, activity. But as you said, when you experience crypto, when you when you actually into crypto, there's not like additional or um, like a part-time job um, thing. You're you're getting addicted straight away because uh, you've got so many ways of devel to, to develop uh, in terms of let's not only trading, but you've got so many aspects like infrastructure, gaming, uh, you've got so many industries within that web-free industry. So that's very interesting. And people can find their own cup of tea and just try to stay, stick to it. So yeah, so that was in 2020, I would say. So that was the time when I realized that I want to stay full-time with blockchain area. Yeah, that's super interesting. I, I had the exact same uh, kind of experience coming into the market in 2016. I I didn't know about magic internet money. Like I, I mined Ethereum and that's when ERC-20 came out and all these ICOs. And then I realized this is not just about like a revolution of payment systems and like store of value and these kind of things that we like back then there wasn't a term like uh, Web3. That didn't exist like that is something that we have defined afterwards right but back then to really realize what it means to be web3 where all these um all these tokens can be actually operated within different economies and different incentivization protocols and these kind of things and what kind of infrastructure is going to be built there that was for me also the aha moment it's so much bigger than what we think right like uh and working with all these entrepreneurs and people that are uh really like building the future, that's for me at least, like what's the excitement, right? We're working with people like yourself. Uh, yeah, so, so thank you for that, Derek. No worries. So actually, I would just add something to that, what you're saying. So there are actually a few reasons why people want to get into crypto, like into blockchain. Investment point of view, that's one. The other one can be, that's, as you said, web free. So which is like write, um, read and own. The own aspect is something unique for people, which could be, for some people, privacy aspect, very important as well. Some people, of course, take out most of it for uh, the good things, but we are still at the early stage. So we just need to um, build that space just to make it better for everyone, not only for OGs. Yeah. 
definitely makes sense. All right, what's your current sentiment in regards to the market? Well, I used to ask this question to a lot of uh, <laughs> founders like a year ago and 14 months ago. Um, so it's interesting to see how things have uh, kind of changed in the past uh, year. But still, like, how, how are you feeling about the market there? You asked me at the beginning, uh, like you, you mentioned that, that we've been building through bear market conditions. So 2021, then, yeah, 2022, beginning of 23. So that was like a deep, deep, bad market conditions. And if you had asked me then what <laughs> was my approach, I would say there's, it's not important. You know, we're building. That's the most important aspect. It's pretty quiet. We're doing what we need to, we need to do focusing on the development. And from the other point of view, that was really helpful because we could really concentrate on development. Um, we got great uh, supporters of our project, like ambassadors as well, who are actually supporting us till now all the time. So like a proper foundation. So that's the benefit. But at this moment, we are happy with the market that recovered because the PR of the whole blockchain crypto space changes not only for people within the web, web free, but for the people for the outside. So that's very important. If we're thinking about onboarding other users, other people, market needs to be on our side as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the hype is attracting um, more users into the ecosystem. More users is attracting um obviously like VCs and these kind of things, which bring capital. Capital brings uh, more builders because now, you know, you have investors to, to invest in these builders. So um, definitely it's good for all of us, right? Like as an industry, when things are hyped up and um, and just the market is alive again, right? And specific also for me, like this is going to be my third bull run um, and seeing the differences like right now, like it's, it's starting to get pretty, really crazy, but also very, very exciting. And I think that's something that has really changed in this bull market and compared to the other ones is now you have like the ETFs, you have BlackRock uh, coming mm -hmm. out. We're saying something like uh, stuff like, uh, hey, we're going to now invest heavily in uh, RWAs and these kind of things. Right. So it really feels for me, at least like this time is different. Well, no, it's a kind of um, double edged sword there. Uh, but let's see how it goes. So definitely, I think this timing for you as well, it couldn't be better. Like, uh, really, like uh, maybe in two months from now, it's going to be even higher. But uh, it's fantastic to see that uh, you have come this far. Um, let's uh, let's shift over to our discussion in regards to the token, because obviously when um, investors are now buying it through launch pads and afterwards on exchanges, they're not buying equity within the company. They're buying basically the utility tokens of Legends of Elysium. Can you explain us a little bit more um, what kind of benefits uh, they will get? Um, and potentially, you know, also for the speculators, if they're holding it, why should they expect um, to be to other users to, to use it? Let's say that mm -hmm. one. Yep, absolutely. So like from the nerd point of view, <laughs> the tokens actually giving you it's one of the utilities to write to help to actually have impact on future development so let's say when we talk about the proper development point of view by holding a tokens we will be voting as well on the future development so let's say if we uh, will be deciding what will be the next race or the next balls that we will be implementing to the game. We'll be asking the community. So that's the main important, uh, the, the, the most important aspect for us. Because whatever we've done at this moment in the past during our development, we've been trying to um, hear feedback from the community because it's important. Of course, it's not always right, but without listening to the people who are actually users of your product, you are not alpha and omega. You just need to listen to what people want to have. So tokens will be giving you an, a chance just to have impact on that. However, in the game itself, the token will be giving you a chance just to, of course, generate some additional uh, benefits that's important but at the same time adjusting your strategy so let's say we've got features like mine which is a, a kind of a vault as well so people will be able to log their tokens in those kind of vaults 
and at the same time adjust the strategy during the battle. So that's one of the features I can mention about. Let's say other aspect is staking as well. So people will be able to stake the token. And they, at the same time, maybe not a token itself, but for the NFTs, people will be able to stake the cards and some people will be able to rent them out. So we are really want to use that very healthy and thriving environment where people will be um, collaborating and cooperating, even they are only users, only, I mean, gamers, but they will be able to utilize everything within that game ecosystem. So that's very important for us. How will the user uh, get more cards, like stronger cards and these kind of things? This is also the idea that we'll be able to build their own decks and then, you know, like uh, buy packs and then build up like, uh, or is every race, they have their own fixed amount of cards that they are getting basically they're randomized. So for the cards itself, people will be able, actually starting the game, you've got the default deck. So you starting playing for free, actually. However, just to um, become a person who is more into that game or want to, as I said, adjust the new strategies or they need to generate different kinds of profits, become stronger, there will be always an option uh, just to purchase like card packs. So we got, we've got like NFTs, we've got four rarities, we've got common, rare, epic, and legendary. And of course, the legendary ones are the most precious, let's, let's be honest. There is always some little percentage of those cards that will be available for users. And people will be able to actually purchase some of those cards and utilize them in, in in the game because that's the most important aspect not creating the card itself just for the sake of having nft on your wallet is just actually the having the card or any kind of NFT, nft asset which will be utilized later on within the ecosystem so mm -hmm. just one more thing let's say about the mm, store as well that's going to be in the form of nft there will be let's say tickets where people will be able to buy a ticket for the tournaments. So that's the same thing. You're going to own it by purchasing something, let's say, um, and holding it as a um, blockchain asset. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, thanks, Derek. So would users that are, let's say, want to purchase like these packs and stuff, is that just going to be like, can they also use that to the tokens or is that just like on a different payment method? Uh, when you, sorry, could you rephrase it? So if I'm holding the, the tokens, right, I can stake them and then mint like other NFTs. So you are basically saying that people that hold the token, that will have like extra benefits basically within the game and easier access to basically upgrade their own experience uh, and their own deck and, you know, cards within the game. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the NFTs itself only, so you can stake the NFT, let's say, when you've got your strategy and you've got your own deck, and you purchased or even uh, won because you can win the cards as well. You can gain them. It's not like only you need to purchase them. You can, of course, mint them by burning the cards. You just make, you can create your own new cards as well. So it's not always the purchasing, but at the same time, we are giving the player the option just to stake the cards. So people mm -hmm. by staking the cards, the NFTs, the, they've got option just to generate some profits uh, from the staking pool. So they will be having some rewards by having that. And at the same time, people who are actually doesn't, uh, who wants to have like a specific card, they can rent out that specific staked card, which is already staked for a specific period of time and, and paying the renting fee. So they will be paying that in our native token. So you've got always the utility of the token, and at the same time, uh, it's combined with the uh, NFTs and cards. Makes sense. You mentioned like um, you mentioned that like uh, when is the main? Let's say the game is is really going to come out in a sense that it's going to open up for everyone. So it's not in a beta phase anymore. Like when do you think that's uh, kind of planned for? Right, so the game was 
has yeah was available for one and a half year let's say as an alpha open alpha at this moment we've got access only for whitelisted people like proper ogs people holding uh, genesis nfts and people who got won some quests in the past and this period um will will take around a week or over a week just to let people actually start playing the game before the public release so after the launch uh after the listing we will be actually giving people a chance to combine open beta and utility of, of our token at the same time so that was very important for us just to have the release of both things more or less at the same time so uh, yeah within a week or uh, or what week and a half so that's that's gonna be it yeah that sounds great so like it says here that in q2 and then it says you also like in your roadmap that you're planning end of the year to actually have a mobile version i think that that's going to be like a game changer for you guys oh yeah i can talk about it like for ages so let's <laughs> concentrate on the milestones what we've got so as you said, now we've got the web version, which is uh, the MVP. So let's call it, let's say, open beta will be our MVP. Later on, the most important aspects for us, just to get the full version, will be enabling the esports tournaments, where we'll be having spectators, like sponsors, people will be uh, purchasing tickets, there will be rewards, will uh, proper streamers, will people will be invited to our ecosystem just to play um proper tournaments esports tournaments on a monthly basis so that's mm -hmm. very important for us just to enable that feature later on we'll be concentrated always all, 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 uh, as well on enabling guild wars feature well we will be inviting guilds to bring their own communities and having kind of challenges within our ecosystem so that's very important in terms of adoption and exposure as well within at least blockchain ecosystem and hopefully we and we of course will be aiming to the guilds from the outside as well just to let them check it out actually so that's for the full version of the game but as you mentioned later on this quarter four we will be starting working on mobile devices because countries from southeast asia africa they use mobile devices all the time. And at this moment, that may be a bit difficult for them to access desktop devices. So that's why we are concentrated on delivering mobile devices later this year. And switching to desktop devices will be very easy after we've got the mobile devices and then having exposure on Steam, on Play Store, Apple Store will be just a matter of time. Yeah, really exciting. Like for me as well. Like um, I would definitely play it on on the mobile phone rather than mm. like on the desktop. Because it's just like uh, I don't know. I think with these kind of games, so um, definitely looking forward to that and everything that you guys have in the pipeline. Again, congratulations, Derek. Uh, let's shift over to some uh, last questions in regards to the token launch. Maybe so for those who are listening, you still have. No, you still can uh, register to the whitelist on, on Decubate. Um, but for the other listeners that are not here from Decubate, you should also know there is also the, the ITO on GameFi and also on AI Tech. So also a lot of great platforms that are co-launching with us. And then the token listing is going to happen actually on the 29th. So, so that's actually going to be in three days from now. Um, for those who don't have a Decubate account, not going to show too much, but you can register, have a free base here um and try it out but we also have our great learn to earn so if you have listened to everything that Derek had said hopefully you now have enough information to answer the learn to earn and earn some free tokens from uh, the marketing pool uh, so good luck in that yeah we've got the campaign Elias, right so that's gonna last for a month let's say yeah so guys just check it out please yeah so even those who are listening to this after the tg and you think oh, i missed out you still have 30 days after the tg even to, uh, to learn about the project and then to answer some questions and earn some tokens. So, uh, Derek, is there anything that you can tell us? I know I'm not gonna, I hope I'm not putting you on a spot, but is there like uh, something that you can tell us in regards to the token list, like token listing or 
you think that you can disclose today? Um, if there was a secret, I would. Uh, it was be. It would be very difficult just to say. However, once I said about the open beta of the version of the game, it's not just releasing the open beta. We will be having some quests, let's say. So we're gonna treat it as a phase one of open beta. So anybody interested in actually checking out the game, you ch you can check the game, of course, but. If you stay a bit longer, you may find yourself in the position where you'll be actively taking um, part in some kind of quests and tasks if you really want to. And at the same time, you're going to get rewarded by helping us in testing game on mainnet as well. That sounds very exciting. So you heard it here first. Uh, good Easter egg. I'm going to shift over to yeah. some of the community questions. So we got a lot of questions actually from our community and we made some great selections. So yeah, um, Ornat, the one and only. Always great questions here, man. Um, so yes, I actually asked um, a good question that I also have. <clears throat> and Tango is a project that launched not too long ago uh, on the market and they did like, uh, I don't know, like 100X, something like that, really crazy. Um, we have seen that they are also partner up with Legends of Elysium and some very, very nice cards that they're bringing out. Can you tell us more about that partnership and what's in the, what's, what's the nature is of that partnership that you have with Entangle? Yeah, absolutely. That's very important for us. Uh, when you talk about the kind, that kind of partnerships, we issue special cards for the our most valuable partners where we actually enable users to get some additional benefits or rewards by owning the cards. So for the Entangle, that's a one case, but at the same time with the Entangle, along, alongside the Entangle, we've got NFTs like card box, let's say. So when you look at the NFT Entangle and let's say card box, which we had for different and other partners, you will be able to use those specific cards into game ecosystem. So let's say by holding that on your wallet account, and by playing the game, you don't need to use our default settings, let's say. You will be able to uh, just customize the settings by having the NFTs which you hold on your wallet. So that's what we've done, let's say, for Polygon, uh, for BNB Chain. They've got um, different card bags, let's say, where, which will be uh, which user can hold on their own accounts. At the same time, they can import it to the game. And probably in the future, there will be some benefits out of it. But of course, it's really just to promise anything. <laughs> Thanks for that, uh, Derek. So uh, Ona has actually also asked a few very interesting questions. Some of them already been asked uh, or answered. Um, other plans to work with uh, Twitch uh, live stream promoters and uh, actual gamers to try to attract um, some of these, let's say, Web2 gamers into the Web3 space and specifically for Legends of Elysium? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's very important for us. So when we talked about, when we spoken about that tournaments and streaming, we will be trying to have our own platform within the ecosystem where we'll be streaming the game during the tournaments, let's say. Because playing players versus players is fun, but at the same time, we want to maintain uh, great playability and let people watch the game, you know, like you were watching football, let's say. And that's what you were planning to do finally, just to get within our ecosystem. But at the same time, um, before that, we will be approaching um, our partners, let's say, probably games like old Polka started gaming or maybe some uh, partners already, which we've got like Elixir games, which they've got great, great, great um, community just to test the game out and do some streaming as well. But in addition to the par to partners, we will be definitely approaching the proper streamers uh, just to let them test the game. So that's the one thing. And as a second point, promote the game. So that's very important because that means exposure. Makes perfect sense. 
Uh, Derek, I was actually taking a look at most of these questions and I realized like you have answered so many of them. Uh, but I did find another great one. <laughs> Good. I'm going to put it now on the screen. So I'm okay, board. Oh, yeah. And by the way, for the listeners, like I see a lot of questions coming in on Twitter, on YouTube, and also on Twitch. Like if you have more questions after this um, couple of more than I'm asking Derek, so yeah, now is the time to put them on the chat. I'll take a look at all of them. Um, so, yeah, here we have a question from uh, Make Keyboards. How can the community contribute to the game development? And are there plans for player-created content? Right. So in terms of the contribution to the project, so I think that I partially answered that already by saying that we're going to have that phase one after the open beta once we are live on mainnet. So we will be um, testing. We At the same time, the game, game will be live as an MVP, but it's still beta. It's minimal, minimum valuable product, MVP. So at the same time, we'll be introducing new features and new solutions. So it will be very helpful for us if people help us uh, on a daily basis. So by having by completing quests, which will be, be which will be helpful for users, it will be like a guideline for them what we would need actually on that specific period of time just to help us with. So that's the very the easiest way to contribute. The other step will be to become an ambassador. So we released our first ambassador program that was in 2022-2023. So we um, done it in the bear market. We've got great people working and helping us out. Uh, however, now, once the game is live, it would be great just to get more people who could be involved in development process as well. So don't want to say too much at this moment, but probably within two to three weeks, we'll be releasing the article about the ambassador program and people who are really into gaming and want to contribute, we will be more than happy just to discuss with them the, the the other steps. That's great news for everyone there. That is a true dedication. And <laughs> wanted to put a true dedication towards the project and also engage much more and become like an ambassador for the brand. I think that's the best marketing for any game out there and any product actually out there. Uh, so great if they can get like a, a extra incentives. I got one more mm -hmm. question here from, um, let's see, from HM. So he basically asks why you chose to go with Matic instead of other alternatives. So for those who don't know, Legends of Elysium is going to mint their token on Matic Polygon. Um, why did you choose for Polygon? Okay, so I'll try to do my best. So in 2021, when we started to uh, when we started to build the project, um, Polygon was one of the most popular blockchains, and I would say maybe reliable as well and the cheapest transactions fees as well because when we talk about all the interactions within the game we cannot have uh, transactions which are actually killing the benefits that you already generated so matic was the option where we could um, utilize it that's, that's that's the first thing second thing that was the evm compatible so uh, we knew that we will be building the game uh, in uh, writing the smart contracts in Solidity. So Matic was the one of them that was definitely for us. We got support from Matic as well, from Polygon uh, Studio as well. So we've got the agreement with them when we started building the project. And actually, that was the reason why. The, th those three reasons, these three reasons, uh, uh, why we choose the polygon. Probably now, from this perspective, people could say that, okay, you've got Arbitrum now, or you've got new chains that you mantle that you can build on. Yeah, that's really true. That's really true. However, when you're building in 2021 and you are at the beginning and you want to have reliable and the most mm, uh, sufficient blockchain, that's 
that's the most important aspect for us. At this moment, three years later, it's always easy to say you could choose differently. But we are happy with what we've got. It's uh, solid, it's reliable, it's cheap, and it's for gamers and for users. That's perfect answer for me. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Well, we are welcoming you as our first Polygon projects uh, project on Decubate, and definitely, um, definitely see the efficiency and everything there. Um, let's go for. So I'm going to pick up uh, two more questions, depending on mm -hmm. how many I'll see. Derek, I really want to thank you for your time so far. Really amazing answers. Um, so how do you plan to ensure a balance between free-to-play mechanics in the game and financing options? Now, obviously, this is like a question in regards to, okay, how can you make sure that people who are buying uh, a lot, whole lot of tokens um, don't have like a pay-to-win kind of condition, mm -hmm. especially if the tokens does really, really well and people are getting like very early on? Um, for me, that's a big qu that, That's a great question, by the way. Yeah, it Thank is. You. It is. Yeah. So thanks for the question. So the answer will be the holders on people who are, let's say, got a bunch of money in their pockets, they're not the users that they can have impact in the game itself. Of course, speculators on the exchanges, by having a big bug, they can change the price, of course. But in terms of the game, um, in, in the game ecosystem, that's a totally different story because by having impact and just leveling up, in the game and going from level one to 50, let's say, it's not like you need to have only tokens. By playing the game, you are getting, let's say like a soft currency within the game. So we call it electronite, electronite. So it is that soft currency, which is only in-game currency, which will be help allowing you to go to the next step. So it means that if you don't play enough, in the game, in the game ecosystem, you won't be able to progress that quick because the token only won't allow you to progress quicker, just to generate uh, higher rewards. You just need to be a gamer. You just need to be a player uh, just to be fair to others and at the same time uh, not generating too big profits just because you are rich. <laughs> that makes total sense. Derek, I want to wrap up the AMA. Do you have um, anything you want to share with uh, all the listeners? Uh, there's a lot of them, by the way. Like um, anything you would like to share with the community? Great for them to know before we close the call. So, yeah. So I will just repeat again. The open beta is going to be soon. From the development point of view, that is a very uh, important aspect. So uh, we're going to have the stage one of testing. So guys, I'm inviting you just to test out the game once the, guy, once the game is uh, publicly open. That's going to be definitely some incentives for you. Uh, in terms of the IDO, guys, tomorrow, Decubate, AI Tech, don't miss that. Uh, I'm uh, Elliot, you can remind later on what are the rules uh, just uh, for the users just to in, in invest if you prefer. And on Thursday, we've got GameFi. And as Elliot mentioned, on Friday, we've got a big, big listing just as a little gift for the Easter time. All right, sounds great. So we're all looking forward to it. Uh, like you mentioned, Derek, I really want to thank you and all the listeners and all the great questions from our community members. Uh, there's been so many great questions here, like literally happy a list of hundreds of questions. So thank you so much for being part of this community, uh, for your time being with us during this AMA. You guys are making this happen, all of you. Uh, make it worth our while to talk about this also live. Um, yeah, super, super exciting times, not just for Decubate, but with Legends of Elysium and everything that we are building. I'm super proud of everything. Derek, again, thank you so much. I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to this collaboration, not just up to the IDO, but really also beyond. Um, definitely going to play uh, and support you guys whatever, whatever it is that you need in order to succeed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much appreciated. Your help is very valuable for us. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. Have a great day, morning, evening, wherever you are. Have a great one. See ya. See ya, everyone.